Good morning and welcome to this week's edition of Encompass Live. I am your host, Krista Porter, here at the Nebraska Library Commission. Encompass Live is the Commission's weekly webinar series where we cover a variety of topics that may be of interest to libraries. We broadcast the show live every Wednesday morning at 10 a.m. Central Time, but if you're unable to join us on Wednesdays, that's fine. We do record the show every week, as we are doing today, and you can watch the um, any of our archived recordings later at your convenience. And I'll show you at the end of today's show where you can access all those archives and how that all works. Both the live show and the recordings are free and open to anyone to watch, so please share with your friends, family, neighbors, colleagues, anyone you think might be interested in any of the topics we have on the show. Um, uh, most of you, I believe everyone today is here from Nebraska, but just in case anyone is watching um, who is not from Nebraska, the Nebraska Library Commission. We are the state agency for libraries, so and that is all for all sorts of libraries, all types of libraries in Nebraska. So we provide services um, across the board. So you will find shows on um, topics on our Encompass Live show that are for K-12, publics, academics, schools, uh, colleges, universities, corrections, museums, anything and everything. <laughs> uh, really, our only criteria that it is has something to do with libraries, uh, something libraries are doing, something we think um, will be fun that they could do. Uh, we bring in guest speakers from different libraries across the, um, the state and across the country to talk about things they're doing. Um, we do presentations for um, our library commission staff do presentations sometimes uh, for things that we specifically are offering products and services here through the library commission. Today we have kind of a combination of that, and I'll um, talk about that in a second. What I want to do quickly, though, just briefly here for our Nebraska libraries we have in the line, I want to remind everyone here on our Nebraska Library Commission website, we are still um, full on and involved in the COVID-19 pandemic, and we do have resources on our Library Commission website for our libraries. Uh, right here at the top of our page, we do have a list. We try and keep up on what libraries are open or closed or offering certain com accommodations. Um, reopening, reclosing as things, situations change. So um, take a look at that. Uh, please, if you um, check your library's info, if it's not correct, shoot us an email so we can make sure it's up to date there. We also do have a pay, uh, poster that's pinned to the top of our page. It'll always be there at the very top, so you don't have to go searching for it, of resources related to um, COVID-19. We have a link to that list. We have some maps showing what services some libraries are offering. And then we have a sub page here, depending on what you might be wanting to know. What do I do with my kids at home? my business and employment, et cetera, et cetera. But I just wanted to highlight our library page here for our library staff. Um, we've tried to gather information as it has um, been um, put out since this all started back in um, March. Um, information from places like CDC, World Health Organization, ALA, OCLC, IMLS, all the organizations that work for, <laughs> will help us with libraries um, and various things here. Um, related to opening, closing, host holding meetings, summer reading programs, policies, et cetera, et cetera. As we hear of new things, we add them to the page. So it's always we have there always be new information on here. So you know, keep checking back here. Um, some of this stuff for those of you who might be listening that are not Nebraska, some of this is general just from anywhere. Some of it is specific to Nebraska. So do pay attention <laughs> to those certain things. Um, and check with your if you're not in Nebraska, check with your own state library or your state library association. They may be doing the same thing um, in your state for you. But I just want to make sure everyone knows that that is out there for you um, to help, uh, doing what we can to help our libraries get through this pandemic. So, on to today's show. I'm going to hand her presenter control to you, Christine, right now, so we can get your slides up as I do my intro to your screen. Let's see what it does. Okay. And then... Is it showing my screen? Mm-hmm. Yep. We can see your slides. And if you do slideshow, and then from the beginning... Yep. There, now it worked. Okay, I oh, don't know what happened okay. last time. Now it's perfect. All right. This okay, is sorry video. about the technical <laughs> difficulties there. Um. <laughs> so this morning we are going to be talking about, it's right on screen, Kreutz Bennett Donor Advised Fund. Um, good morning, Christine. This is Christine Gale, who's from the Nebraska Community Foundation. And um, this is a great grant opportunity for um, our libraries in our small towns here in Nebraska, population 3,000 or less. Um, Everybody should be applying for this, if you ask me. <laughs> um, <laughs> but um, I'm just going to hand it over to you, Christine, to talk about it and tell us all about the, the grant and the, the fund and where it came from and how libraries can get involved. 
Okay, thank you, Krista. Well, as she mentioned, I'm Christine Gale and I'm with the Nebraska Community Foundation. I'm a community impact coordinator and so I help um, many of our different funds and um, affiliated funds uh, grant out their money and actually uh, work with them to make the best impact that they can. So uh, it's a pleasure to be involved with the Kroon's Bennett Donor Advice Fund because I think it is a unique opportunity for our small town libraries. Uh, so hopefully you will see something here and be able to see how it can benefit you. Um, so the Kroon's Bennett uh, don uh, is a donor advised fund and we have all different funds at the Nebraska Community Foundation, but a donor advised fund is set up by a donor and it can be set up for a specific purpose, which this one was set up specifically for uh, the benefit of some of our rural libraries. Um, a donor advised fund can also be set up um, just for general charitable giving, which we have some of those as well. Um, donor advised funds can be given and set up during a donor's lifetime so that they are a part of that um, and they can uh, be a part of the committee who um, decides where the grant should be given. Or it can also be set up upon a donor's death as part of their um, estate planning. And uh, that is the case that happened here with um, Shirley Krutz, who um, was a lifelong educator, as you can see, and a lifelong learner. And she uh, was from a small town um, and went to Harvard High School. She uh, left Nebraska and, and got her education in lots of different places, as you can see on the screen there. But um, her love was definitely learning and education and um, of course, libraries. And um, she was a traveler, a world traveler, and um, as she was getting older, she just felt that she should provide an opportunity for others to experience the world as well, even if they could not necessarily travel to those places. And one of the ways that she could do that was by um, helping out the libraries because libraries are such a great resource for discovering the world. And so, um, so Shirley uh, did not have any children. And so she decided to leave some of her estate to begin this Kroon's Bennett Donor Advice Fund. Um, it is specifically to help rural libraries. And she does have some living nieces and nephews in Nebraska. And so she named them um, as the individuals who serve on this donor advice committee. And so they meet once a year and review the grant applications and um, then help make decisions on where this um, donor advice fund gives grants. Last year we gave um, grants to 15 libraries and gave out over $116,000. So um, there's lots of um, different communities that are benefiting from this very generous gift. So um, who is eligible um, in Nebraska? Um, she basically wanted to really support the, the small rural communities and understood that those libraries are, um, are sometimes difficult to continue to, um, to fund and the communities sometimes um, have a hard time keeping them going. So she wanted this to be another tool, another opportunity for those libraries. So she chose um, to have it for um, libraries of um, population less than 3,000. And she made it pretty broad for libraries that um, they can apply for a number of areas that libraries um, need funding. She set up so she could do a, a planning grant, an enhancement grant, and a facilities grant. And I'll go through each of those for you. But um, one thing is, you know, many of you have probably applied for lots of grants and um, you will notice when you get to our application for the Crutes Bennett Donor Advice Fund that it's it's fairly simple and that's by design. We really hope that we don't get people hung up on a, a really challenging uh, grant process because um, we know the good work that you do and we'd like your time to be spent on actually providing the services to the people in your communities and not um, 
not having to do a lot of research for a difficult grant application. So hopefully it's straightforward and very simple, but you can always give me a call if you're looking at the application and, and need some assistance. I'm happy to help through the process as you're filling it out. And also um, if once I receive it, there are some things that need clarified, I will definitely contact you. So a pretty simple application process. So the planning grant, as you can see, is one of the areas, and that's a non, that's for those libraries that are not yet accredited with the Nebraska Library Commission. And um, this was a way to just help some of those libraries get over that hump to actually become accredited because we understand that um, it does, it is a rigorous process and it has some costs involved with it, whether it's your time or um, travel to go to webin or seminars and that sort of thing. So this particular portion of this grant is to help um, alleviate some of that to help continue um, the process of accreditation. And so I'm going to probably have, if you have questions on what could be covered, I'll probably have Krista talk a little bit more about the accreditation process and what some of that might include, but certainly, um, as you know, there are lots of different categories in the accreditation process and and pretty much anything in there that has a cost to it that um, this, this grant could definitely help. So as you can see, this is a little bit of a smaller grant, but it is for that purpose, um, minimum 500, maximum 2,500. Um, we do do our grants on a matching um, basis. So this is a one-to-one -one match, which means um, for every dollar that you um, apply for, you have to match with a dollar. We don't really have any restrictions on where that match comes from. It can come from private donors. It can come from your library foundation. It can come from uh, um, any of the city or village um, funds that they would like to um, speak that they can match with those dollars. So really there are no restrictions on where the money comes from for the match, but it does need to be a one-to-one -one match. And as you can see on this grant, we do not allow um, in-kind match, which um, one of the other ones does. Uh, so uh, this can be a multi-year grant um, because we know the accreditation process can take some time. So that's the planning grant, the first grant. The second one is an enhancement grant. And this is the, the next two are for libraries who are of towns 3,000 population or less and are accredited libraries. They've been accredited at at least one of the levels um, of the accreditation process. And so um, enhancement grants are for um, mostly to enhance programming at the library. And this can really um, be a broad area that you could apply for. Um, we've had some, we've had recently a, a very popular thing are the maker spaces and having um, either equipment or uh, software to go with those programs to help it, um, offer that to the community. And, and so that we saw a lot of that last year. It can also be for summer reading enrichment programs. It could be after school programs. It could be adult reading programs. I mean, pretty much anything, any programming that a library wants to do, bringing in um, special speakers, doing a special focus area for a period of time really the sky's the limit on that. So if you have um, any creative ideas that you'd like to bring new programming to just get people excited about coming back to the library, and um, of course it can be books, um, uh, that's an obvious one and, and certainly not one we wanna forget, but we know that libraries um, provide a, a number of services these days. So um, the books definitely fall in here as well. So that match is a one-to-one -one match as well. Um, with the minimum amount to request is $1,000, maximum is $20,000. So um, the this is the one where, I'm sorry, whoops. This is the one where uh, an in-kind match can be considered. And so it just depends what that is. Um, it could be if, uh, if maybe the library friends fund has already um, purchased a 
piece of equipment towards the maker space and you want to try to count that as your match that's something they could look at um, the in kind is a little case by case situation that the the committee members will take into account and decide on that so um, yeah, that is one thing i was going to ask it because i know people are always questioning you know what exactly does that mean what is an in kind match yeah and you know, I, I, should, I should have started off that this is only my second year doing this grant because uh, Reggie Carlson, who just retired from the Nebraska Community Foundation, has kind of uh, led this process from the beginning. So she would better be able to um, address that about what maybe has been approved in the past for in-kind. But um, generally, in-kind is um, time, labor um, of, of maybe maybe sweat equity work that you've already put into something or mm -hmm. it's a, a match of a item that someone else has purchased that can be combined with this so that's so make other things that could be related to the grant project or helpful right. to it but that aren't straight out cash money right exactly non cash yeah exactly and and so like i said that is kind of on a case by case basis and this also can be a multi-year grant if you would like to run something um, beyond just a one-year time period. And the third area is the facilities grant. Um, and this again is for accredited libraries. And the amount is a little bit higher because obviously the cost for facilities improvements tends to be a little bit higher. So the minimum is 5,000 for this grant with a maximum of 20,000 one-to-one -one match, and this is a situation where in-kind match would not be allowed. So if you did have a local contractor who wanted to um, to in-kind their labor services, that would be awesome, and you could certainly accept that, but you could not count it as the match for this grant. So um, that would be a situation where it does not apply. But um, this type of grant is a multi-year grant. Um, if you if your project um, did expand beyond one year we could definitely do it for more than one year but um, there are a couple of stipulations on this uh, facilities grant obviously facilities is um, building and bricks and mortar kind of thing um, the one piece that we say is not eligible are ongoing maintenance and how we define that is like replacing an HVAC system, gutters, roofing, sidewalks. And the reason for that is um, these, this grant money is actually supposed to be used to help you do something that might not otherwise occur or to um, do some extra things in your community or do some extra work that may not have otherwise been able to happen. We don't wanna use it for just, um, helping the community so that the city does not have to take care of their own building or you know something like that so this is supposed to be above and beyond what the normal maintenance is and um so right. that's the um, so that's say not for your regular maintenance and upkeep that right you're doing like you mentioned you know, are you going to need a new hvac system or something um, right special case like I know we've had some, especially with last year, flooding damage of, of buildings. That would be like a you probably didn't plan for that. Exactly. <laughs> um, and and that special is the, expansions to the building or something that isn't in the part of the regular daily keeping just the, the building going. Yeah. Right. And that um, definitely uh, we know lots of Nebraska um, communities had to deal with recovery from the flooding. And so certainly anything that was in a cleanup situation or, or getting rid of any um, mold or things that happened due to moisture that could uh, definitely apply. Um, some other projects that have been approved are um, we've had some some facility safety things brought up that enhanced um like their uh the lighting in their parking lot or more bike racks for places for kids to um, a safer place for kids to put bikes um of course it could be bathroom upgrades we know that um, some of our buildings are aging um it could be we have had some um external like bricks and mortar projects where, you know, the tuck work needs to be fixed or the, um, the 
I'm trying to think the mortar actually between the bricks is cracking and or the steps are cracking, you know, things like that can be um, uh, paid for through this facilities grant. It's just that um, we will ask what kind of support you have from the owner of the building. Now, sometimes that's the, the village and sometimes that's the actual library foundation or, um, you know, and make sure that they are doing their part. That's just the point that we wanna make with this one. But certainly some great things have been done with this facilities grant to improve our libraries and make them um, more enjoyable for people. So those are the three areas. Um, so I just wanted to talk a little bit about um, Ravenna Public Library, which is one that we've given a couple of grants to, and that brings up that there is no limit to if how many times you apply for this grant. So if you apply annually, I, I suppose that's something we could certainly look at. We, we will obviously do our best to um, make sure that we spread out the um, money across the state, but we uh, definitely, there is no limit. So if you're, if you are a very engaged library with lots of great ideas, please feel free to apply because that's exactly what this is for. So Ravenna is a library that has received this grant a couple of times. Um, the last time was 2007, or well, not the last time, but one time was 2017. And they received a $20,000 grant to build a they actually built a brand new library that was a one point something million dollar project that did um, change their entire building to a new one level um, building that's a, a beautiful new building. But particularly for this grant, they asked to use the money towards a children's library room. And so they, um, here's a picture of that library. Um, room and they did this nice plaque in honor of Shirley Crutes Bennett um, because um, this this grant helped pay for this room. And uh, Channel 1011 in Lincoln did do a little feature story on this grant, but also on this uh, donor advised fund overall. And so I'm going to let Krista uh, go ahead and play that. And that gives you a little bit more background information and, and maybe gets some questions answered for you. Ah, there we go. We'll show that right now then. Yeah. Do you okay. need me to do anything? I'm going to switch over to my screen here so I can get it up. There it is. Um, so this is the page that has the um, article. And then um, if you scroll down. Yeah, yeah, scroll down. They've got a nice little video here. We might have to listen to a quick ad. Stephanie Rosenberg and oh, no. her four year old son Jasper and her two year old daughter Malin to the Ravenna Public Library. They come here at least a couple of times a week. We enjoy the time. It allows us to read different books, it allows them to have imaginative play. This new $1.4 million library officially opened in August of 2018. The community worked together to make it a reality, but local leaders also utilized grant money. A large grant came from the Shirley Kreutz Bennett Donor Advised Fund. They definitely came through and donated $20,000 for us. The Children's Library is now dedicated in honor of the Kreutz Bennett Donor Advised Fund. The fund was established by Shirley Kreutz Bennett. She was a lifelong educator and uh, she was also a world traveler. And she wanted to provide people uh, a world of information just like she had through her travels. And she decided that by investing in libraries, she could do that. When Shirley died, she made a gift to the Nebraska Community Foundation. According to her wishes, every year, uh, a fund advisory committee of her nieces and nephews uh, makes um, grants and uh, receives applications from the libraries and communities where there are fewer than 3,000 people. Jane Stone is a niece of Shirley Kreutz Bennett and she is involved with reviewing the application for the grant money. Every year we give out about, uh, it's about $80,000 a year that we grant out every year. So uh, plenty of funds available for people on their projects. Jane says her aunt would be happy that small town libraries are getting assistance. I think probably the reason Aunt Shirley focused on rural communities is because she was a farm girl herself. 
She was a 1941 graduate of Harvard High School and our family farms um, still to this day between Harvard and Gilbert, Nebraska. So she, you know, she, I think that's where her heart is. There are a number of requirements for libraries to be eligible for the grants. There is uh, a requirement that libraries need to provide a one-to-one -one, uh, uh, local funding uh, in order to get matching grants. But once the grant money is secured, local libraries are finding plenty of ways to use the money. We have um, three different areas that we do grant funding in. Um, one is uh, towards accreditation, and then we also do enhancement grants and facility grants. The Ravenna Public Library is a beautiful facility here in this Buffalo County community. And as you might imagine, it's being used in a number of ways. We are an after-school bus drop-off location, so the school bus brings them to our doorstep every single day after school. We do programming three days a week for those kiddos. Um, we have book clubs for the adults. We have Pinterest nights. And for people like Stephanie, she is just glad that Shirley Croyd's Bennett Donor Advised Fund played a role in building a library in Ravenna, where her kids can start the journey of learning. That's probably good. Now, a quick note, libraries are being encouraged to apply for the Shirley Croyd's Bennett Donor Advised Fund. The initial deadline is coming up on October 1st. For more information, you can go to nebraskahometown.org. Well, it really is great to see how this library fund is helping the smaller communities in the state as well. Mm -hmm. And so joining us now with more on this is Nebraska Community Foundation Executive Director Jeff Yost. And it's good to see you this morning. Good morning, John. Yeah. yeah. So, Jeff, we heard in this previous story about a donor advice fund. Mm -hmm. um, what kinds of projects and programs are sponsored and supported by donor advice funds through the Nebraska yeah. Community Foundation? We can use philanthropic dollars for all sorts of public good purposes. Libraries, K-12 education, early childhood development, youth engagement, aging in place, economic development, leadership development, entrepreneurship, training and work. I mean, we just, we've done that sort of work in lots and lots of communities all over the state for years, and it's really fun to see the difference it makes. Um, with libraries in particular, this is, libraries are one of the main pieces we have to help communities uh, not have a digital divide in their place. Um, so libraries are actually more important than they've ever been. Hmm. Yeah, I know uh, I was talking to them and they were saying, hey, libraries are not about books, just about books anymore. Yeah. A lot more going on. Um, when it comes to a donor advice fund, can the donor choose to remain anonymous? Yes, we have a number of donors who have chosen to remain anonymous uh, for a short period of time or maybe that's their, their wish indefinitely. So we're happy to protect that donor confidentiality if that's what somebody chooses to do. Mm -hmm. Let's say someone out there is watching right now and they want to maybe establish a donor advice fund in their hometown. How could they do that? Mm -hmm. uh, they can contact any of us at the Nebraska Community Foundation um, or they could talk to one of the affiliated fund leaders in their community. We work in about 250 communities around the state. so. You probably have a friend or a neighbor that's now connected to the Nebraska Community Foundation. I know in my, my town of Pender, there are lots of people connected, yeah, so sure. it's a network across the state. Yeah, and uh, the website again is nebraskahometown.org. Okay. And the telephone number is 402-323-7330. Okay. Okay, thanks, Krista. So um, I just want to mention while we were watching this, considering right now it's um, August 2020, as you can see, this was a year ago, August 2019. So, of course, that library is not currently having the kids come in with um, um, in right. the same um, and the same number as you know, considering the pandemic. But um, that is what they were doing um, a year ago. Yeah. Yes, the right. schedule is still the same. So, um, do you want me to go back to you to continue the yes. slide? Please. All right, just a sec, I will get you back up. And Krista, you, you bring up a, a great um, topic, which is we are in different times now. 
And uh, the Nebraska Community Foundation has, um, I think, reacted very quickly um, in a number of communities with many of our funds um, to address the COVID-19 situation in a number of ways. We have some other matching grants um, that we have been um, offering. One is bridging the learning gap to help with um, students in schools. And one is um, bridging or connecting elders with family because we know there are several elderly that are isolated in either uh, facilities where they cannot receive visitors or in their homes where they just um, are very isolated. So we are, are doing our, our best to help where we can with some other um, charitable dollars. But this particular one, um, I want libraries to consider that if they are considering, um, I mean, obviously the digital divide existed prior to COVID-19, but we've all noticed that it has become very um, it, more visible these days because of COVID-19. And I know that libraries can serve um, bridging that gap. And so um, certainly technology and programming or um, any um, assisting students that might be falling behind in school, that library, any programming like that, that libraries would like to do, that would all fall under the enhancement grant and is certainly something that we would consider. So um, we will try to be flexible with the times as well. I, I, I don't think anyone could have foreseen that this was coming and um, here we are. So certainly as your programming needs change, uh, this, this grant can also accommodate that. So just wanted to throw that out there. And Ravenna, besides doing this fantastic new facility recently, just last year then, they did ask for another grant under the enhancement grant, and they did receive another $20,000 from this um, from this donor advised fund and that was for their maker space as i had mentioned those are uh, that was a popular program the innovation studios project mobile maker space that the uh, library commission did was um, extremely popular across the state still going on. we're trying to get it back up we've been on pause because okay anything else with the pandemic but it is we still have another year through June or July of next year that we'll be doing installations and, and things into various libraries. So, Well, I encourage you to take advantage of that because we have seen through these applications how popular it is. And it seems like a great way to test it out and see if it's right for your community. And many of our um, communities like Ravenna found that it was so popular and really brought in lots of new people that hadn't been using the library before or recently and also all different age groups and that it was really something that was very useful for their community. So Ravenna decided to um, to um, invest some dollars of their own to develop their own maker space and they did ask for our assistance with that. So um, I think once they go through that innovation studios process and get some of their staff trained, you know, that's a barrier sometimes just to start from scratch of not for sure that we can handle the tech side of things. But once you have the staff trained, um, it, it does seem like that's uh, something that your program, Krista, really helps with and then libraries can go on their own to do it. Yeah, the, the Library Innovation Studios, this was an IMLS grant that we received here at the commission to put um, makerspace equipment for a temporary time in libraries. 20-ish weeks each library gets to um, have some of this equipment. Um, like some of the things I mentioned there, vinyl cutter, heat press, there's 3D printer, embroidery machines, um, what is it, a Lego mind storms for robots, all sorts of things. Um, and basically to test it out and see, like you said, learn about it. Um, their, their staff, their volunteers can learn how these things work and then decide which part, which, because there's a lot of stuff going on in maker spaces now. It's huge. There's so many different pieces of equipment. How do you know what to get? Um, we bring in the equipment, you get to test it, <clears throat> then we take it out and bring it to another library for them. But then this is actually exactly what we want to happen with that grant. We got you the, the taste um, and you know how it works and you know what your community 
out of all this equipment really wants in, in, in your town, now find a way to get it permanently for yourself. You may have monies you already have, or go and look for a grant that will then get exactly the pieces that you need that you know your people will use. And this is the perfect result. Exactly what exactly. we want. Exactly. Yeah. And I do think last year we had about five or six communities, um, community libraries <clears throat> apply for that purpose. So um, that's certainly a, a, a popular thing. Um, so hopefully that gives you some ideas of some um, types of uh, programs or uh, facility improvements or um, if you are trying to be accredited that you can use this to help through that process. I'd be happy here at the end to try to answer any questions that you have. But as far as the application process goes, um, we do have something called a short form, which is extremely short and basically just asking what the idea is that you have um, to use this grant for. And then also um, it does ask you where you think the one-to-one -one match would come from. It does not, um, at that point, you do not need to have it all secured and in place, but it's just for us to get an idea that you're on the right track for this grant. And that little short application form is due October 1st. And then we go through those um, short-term forms or short forms, and we um, those that are then eligible, we ask them to um, submit a full proposal, which is a little bit longer. But like I said, um, we tried to keep it as simple as we could, and still get the information that we need. But that is due in um, the first part of January. It's I believe January 11th in 2021 this year but you can certainly go to this website um whoops this website is the nebraska community foundation's website it talks about the kroon spennett donor advice fund and then this one is the nebraska library commission and where the red arrow is i'll let chris links right out to that meet the your page on the community foundation site yes so there's a couple of ways that you can get there mm -hmm. um to learn more about it. And uh, as I mentioned, I'm happy to answer any questions if you're not sure about something. So mm -hmm. here is my information. Um, and you can find me also on the Nebraska Community Foundation um, web page. So Krista, I guess, are there any questions that have come up while we are doing this talk or do we just wanna open it um, up? Yeah, uh, not yet. Um, yeah, if anybody has any questions, go ahead and type into your questions section. Um, if you have a microphone, you want to use that, just tell me that and you can do it that way. Um, if you want to know about, if you have any questions about applying, um, about what you could and couldn't apply for, tips, tricks, whatever, um, put it in there. Um, I do want to say, uh, as far as the application form said, go, um, applying for grants can be intimidating. These are not there's a relatively painless these I would think it is you know tell us what your idea is um what's going on in your community you what kind of support you have from your local community for whatever the library is doing um and we can also help you with writing those grant those applications too you can reach out with um to me or to Christine and um I've, I've reviewed some people's um either short or long applications before they actually submit it, just to give some tips and 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 um, advice on you might wanna you know, beef up this part or don't forget to tell them, you know, what the mayor or the city administrator thinks, you know, whatever, um, you know, give, I can give you tips. I actually participate in, um, along with Christine and the nieces and nephews um, in the, um, deciding who the grants, um, when we do that in the spring, spring-ish. February. February. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and we should maybe talk about that. So after that January long application is submitted, the um, committee, the donor advised fund committee does get together in about mid to the third week in February. Mm -hmm. And then um, they make their decision and um, everyone is notified the very first part of March, but around March 1st. So that is our timing um, as far as this process goes. And it is a once a year um, process. So we are just beginning. Um, now's the time to be thinking about those short applications and the different projects you do. I will mention that we have been able to give um, multiple grants to the same community in multiple areas. So that is an option too if you have a, a programs uh, enhancement idea as well as you need a facility upgrade. Um, you could apply for both. And we oh, would yeah. at least look at that. So and that's one thing that's great about too that I've had also people ask me 
well, I already did that. So can I do it again? And absolutely. And, right. and you multiple ones. There's not, there's, as you mentioned, there's not a limit. Just apply every time, everything you come up with. Um, it could be the same type of grant next year, just because something else needs to be done or want a completely different one. Do a, do a program instead of a facilities one. Um, there's no, um, there's no bad marks for because well we gave right. one last year so we can't this year it's actually more the opposite they're all about we want to give out this money yes just, I was just gonna say where this money this isn't like money that you know afterwards we can keep it for some other it's it that's the only purpose is to give it to libraries and so we need you guys to come and ask for it right to do good work we have to give the money out and we want to give the money out so we are a, a unique granting situation where we are not looking for reasons to catch you that you did something incorrect in the process and so you no longer are eligible we are actually looking for ways if something's not quite right that we'll call you and we'll try to figure out a way to make it work so that um, what you are ultimately trying to achieve does happen so um, and i know definitely also over the time of a grant um even after it's been approved um I don't know if this is the right wording, changed requirements. Like the library has said, okay, yes, we get, thank you for the grant, we're gonna do this thing. And then something changes in the community and they can't do what they wanted to do. Things can be changed. None of this grant stuff is really in stone. Just because, you know, well, for example, last year, we wanted to do something, but then there was a flood. So instead we now have to change gears. And um, that's that can be done. You can always negotiate about what the grant might be for, or, um, put it off a year because we couldn't do it this year because of extenuating circumstances, that's fine. You couldn't do it in 2020, we'll bump you to 2021, it's okay. Mm -hmm. Right, and that did happen this year with um, COVID because obviously it changed the libraries um, being open necessarily and also um, for some that were trying to get accredited, as you know, you kind of suspended the accreditation process. So some of those workshops and things were yeah. not available. And so we have offered to extend those grants from last year that were meant for um, assisting with accreditation. And the same thing could happen if it was a facilities grant. And even if you had a construction delay of some sort and you needed, um, the only thing we do ask is that you, um, communicate with us and don't assume that we're going to fund right. something differently um, it, just communicate with us and if we are aware of things ahead of time we'll do everything we can to work with you the other stipulation I should mention on facilities um, grants that seems to come up is um, we do not grant to things that have already been paid for or spent I'm sorry I'm gonna sneeze um, so if you are doing a project, obviously most projects that are facilities related, unless they're just small projects, they do cost more than the 20,000 match that we provide. So if um, you're midway in a project and if you specifically asked us to pay for let's say windows, but windows were done prior to hearing if you got our grant, then we would not be able to use that grant for the windows because it's the work had already been done. So That'd usually when I work with people on a, on a facilities grant, it needs to be for upcoming new um, right. pieces of that project. But if parts of that project have been done and paid for, that's mm -hmm. okay. That's that's not a problem. So, right. hopefully so it can't be for something, you know, it's not a reimbursement for something you already did. You've got to be thinking forward. But it can be, like you said, part of it, like we haven't done the windows yet. So right. nothing has been done. We did this other work on the building, but not the windows, that's gonna be next year. Then yes, you can ask for the, that money because you haven't gotten to that part of the big full project of other stuff that you did do. Yep. Exactly, so, exactly. Just think of it, always thinking forward. What am I doing next that I have me? Not what I've already done. <laughs> right, right. Um, but we do have a couple of uh, comments and questions here. Um, Tammy, who's from Genoa, well, well okay was the director, library director in Genoa says, I agree with Krista, everyone should apply. Yes, Genoa did, actually one that did that, you were talking about the mortar and, and the building is coming apart. And yes. uh, they've done multiple grants. Um, Tammy's now our director of our Three Rivers library system. She has now become oh. one of the directors. Um, but yes, Tammy is a great one to talk to about this because she's done multiple applications that they have received in Genoa. Um, and then we have a question from Lori, who is, I believe from, uh, yes, Culbertson. We're working on changing from pen and card checkout to the electronic checkout 
in conjunction with joining membership to the Pioneer Consortium. Pioneer Consortium is a group of libraries that share an online catalog here in Nebraska, 20-ish, 20 2025 libraries. Um, would the enhancement grant be an option? Um, I believe. So switching to electronic, sure, I think. Um, there is a membership fee to join the consortium. Um, there's cost to join that, to getting all of their holdings and records into that. Um, uh, if, can you remember back when this um, started, did you have a lot more of these kind of requests that people were moving from um, kind of the old school paper version to electronic or has that happened during this grant time period? Um, Yes, we, we have had it happen. Um, actually, we've done grants here at the Library Commission for the same exact purpose where we support the consortium, the Pioneer Consortium, um, our, what we call our library improvement grants. There's lots of kind of grants you can apply for, obviously, um, that we have um, given grants to libraries for exactly this purpose, for, for becoming automated if they never were before, um, and then also to join this consortium, the Pioneer Consortium that's here in Nebraska. Um, our library improvement grants here, it's a funding question on our side. It's money that comes to us from the federal government, um, Library Services Technology Act money, LSTA, and it varies each year how much money we might get. Some years we haven't been able to do them. Um, we did last year, we're not sure about this year, and we don't know how much money we'll have too, so we haven't always been able to do it. Um, I don't remember if, We've ever, so I know we've done it here through the Library Commission grants for Library Improvement mm -hmm. Grants for this exact purpose. I don't recall. I'd have to go back and look to see if it's ever been done via this, the Chris, Chris Bennett, but I'm just looking to see about our description. Community education outreach programs or services that benefit long ongoing routine causes of general maintenance of available equipment or software. Um, I think if I, like I said, I do participate in this. This is the kind of thing I think, if yeah, you remember last year um, when we did the evaluation of these, Christine, I do a lot of the, um, because, you know, Christine and the nieces and nephews don't, I'm like the library expert for them. Exactly. <laughs> She's our expert on libraries. <laughs> yeah, what libraries need and do and whatnot. Um, I think this would be a one that I would advocate for doing, yes. Um, it falls under the description where it talks about equipment or software purchase or upgrades that serve as a component of a larger programmatic endeavor. Um, the program being we're trying to you know, get our online catalog better so that uh, people can con you know, reach out and use our services. Um, That's what I would say too. Education and outreach, people would be able to look online to find out what the library has. Absolutely. Um, so I think this would be um, an, a uh, grant that I would explain to them and advocate that yes i think it does fall in that category and it would be okay yes um, i would say definitely in the enhancement of the three areas and um what i would suggest is that you um, address not only the issue of moving from the paper and pencil to the electronic but the benefits that you hope to achieve by doing that because i think that's what the um, committee would really be interested in is um, how can not only does this help you become more efficient and modern as a library but also like krista mentioned what benefits to your patrons does it provide by going electronic so that's right. what i would so suggest it's not like it's not just a we want to uh, automate it's we want to automate and it's going to have this effect exactly that second part is what gets you into this particular grant exactly uh, yeah if we do library improvement grants it's pretty much for that for us it's just we need to automate kind right. of and, and we have we so, have had some um, libraries apply for ours and yours, and um, they have received a little bit of funding from you and a little bit from us. So that is an option if someone um, can make it fit. And, and that's what I think is something to, that I think is a, a benefit to the fact that we are here at the Library Commission involved in this particular um, mm -hmm. grant, op this opportunity, because um, we talk to each other about, well, we can give them, we only have this much to give, but if you guys give the other part, then together they can do the project. So we do work together to get you multiple grants, you know, to apply from to complete something. Yes. Exactly. Yeah. I, I can't remember. We did something like that last year and I can't remember. I think uh, it was, if we gave ours, you guys would do yours. 
hours. So we had to go back. Right, because we wanted to make sure that they could get enough then, to actually do it. Uh -huh. Right, to complete the, whatever the project was, yeah. Yes. So, yeah, so look into it, Lori. Look and check out the Chris Bennett. Um, we are right now, well, when we're talking about grants in general, at the commission, we are right now working out our budget for what grants we will be offering for next year, for 2021. Um, should be some announcements coming up in the next couple of weeks. <clears throat> um, so keep your eyes open about that. Um, we usually do youth grants for excellence for youth services. We do um, internship grants to get you an extra staff person, um, continuing education grants, and then the library improvement grants. Um, those are the four that we, we can offer um, if we have the funding and we're working on budgeting how that could work this year. Um, so any other questions or comments anybody has? Uh, go ahead and type in the questions there. You can always reach out to Christine, of course, anytime or me um, if you do have questions and check out the website too uh, where all the resources are. Um, I'm going to, while we're waiting to see, pull back to my screen because I'm going to show you guys too because we didn't look at it. Let's see if I can do. There we are. Um, I, we do, you know, we're talking about where to get to the grant page. Also in the session description for today's show, which will also be in the recording that you guys will all get. Um, when this recording is ready for today, you're all going to get an email letting you know that's available and ready. And um, you'll have a link to the recording and a link to Christine's slides. Um, so you can look at those afterwards. Um, but also right here, there is a link right to the page on the Community Foundation site. So um, that can jump you there quickly. And here is a link to the short application form, Word and PDF, whichever you want. And then the grant guidelines. So everything that you need is right there um, to uh, get started with it. And um, October 1st is your first deadline for that short application form. It doesn't look like anybody typed anything in yet. We're almost getting to the top of the hour again. So I appreciate you um, allowing us to come on and share about this great opportunity. And hopefully those of you are, who are listening, um, are, are, your brain is working and you're creatively thinking about how this might benefit you because we, we really would love to see a lot of great applications. Like I said, last year uh, with the 15 libraries who received funding, um, it was one of our largest years of number of um, applicants. and um, and this money, it, it will not be there forever. It will, it does have an end date of 2030 or before, or when the money is spent. Mm -hmm. And so um, now is really the, the time to apply because um, mm -hmm. you'd like to take advantage of it while we still do have some resources. But um, we certainly have uh, plenty of resources for this year to uh, really do some great work. So. So please do look at it and see how, how easy it actually is to apply for this money. Yeah, and that's something too that I was actually thinking about. You know, some of these grants that you think about, it's just like, oh, they'll always be there, you know, and they're um, making interest to have more money, you know, it's, it's earning interest to have more money to give out. And it's like this, you know, um, rolling thing that'll always be there. Um, this particular fund, as as Christine just said, it is making interest, but it's not for that purpose. The whole, the very at the very beginning, there was a there will be an end date for this. We are not doing this forever. <laughs> right. Um, 20, so 30, in our world, yeah, we, now. yeah, we but call still. that endowed. And so there are several funds with the Nebraska Community Foundation that are permanently endowed funds, and that right. means that they will be there forever, and that there is a payout every year forever. This mm -hmm. particular fund is not that kind of fund. It is invested, but it is not um, set up to last forever. It has an end date of 2030. But honestly, um, we have been very generous with the money, and so um, it probably will not extend to 2030. So that's why I say uh, now is really the time to apply. And there's also not, I know we've mentioned, and, I, and in that video, um, she mentioned how much is given out each year. There's not a limit to how much can be given out each year either. It doesn't work that way that there's this much this year. It's we have this total amount in the fund of whatever is at the moment and we'll get whatever applications we get this year and we'll fund them. We might give out 80,000 as she said, we might give out 150,000. I mean, it depends on what applications we get. So there's not really a, oh, we got to stop because we ran out of money 
it's running out of money of the entire fund, which is got right that left. We've right, got, we don't earmark you know, per year. Official end date. Well, I we've got a lot of money in there. Unless something goes crazy and we use it up this year, I can't imagine that happen. But um, yeah. We have years. we have um we have given out over five hundred and seventy thousand dollars since the, the um time that this fund has been established and so it's just amazing to see the list of communities that benefited from this one donor advice fund it's a great um it's a great story to tell not only to share how many communities can benefit but also how one donor can make such a huge difference in so many people's lives because it's not only those all those communities but all those people in those communities who are benefiting from it so um i think shirley would be very very pleased with how many people she has touched absolutely yeah um and if you're interested in, you know, as you know, we sort of share the story here about uh, Ravenna. If you're interested in wondering, um, every year when they do do these, there's an announcement, a press release that goes out that you can look for. Um, in our, on our and um, Library Commission webpage, if you go to our blog, we always post something about it. So if you just look up, you see, I've done this before. <laughs> Um, That's a you, great idea. You can see what grants we've given in the yeah. past. So this is just a reminder about today's show, but um, here's the announcement from this year, in, back in March, when um, of which libraries received it, and a little blurb about what they got. So if you wanted to maybe talk to a previous um, uh, recipient, do a search here, and you'll find um, all the previous announcements. This one's just last year. There, there you go. I think I changed. Yes, that's an excellent um, idea. And if you keep going, there'll be, here's one encouraging, and here's the ones from the year before, 2019, listing the library. So um, you can check there and see who else has gotten them, and if you want to get some advice from a previous. Which is the Absolutely. Yeah. We're here to help. Right, yeah. All right. Um, oh, and Tammy says, Tammy, our, like I said, Tammy, our previously director of Genoa, now director of our Three Rivers Library System, she just typed it. Anyone can ask me, I've received at least four, <laughs> totaling um, $17,000 over, over time. So yeah, absolutely give her a call too. For you can see, yes, it's kind of the best kept secret, even though we've tried to promote it and mm -hmm. obviously 1011 has done some promotion for us and, and definitely the Library Commission has been promoting, but um, I, I think there's a lot more people who could be taking advantage of this, but those who have discovered it are certainly seeing all the benefits of being able to apply more than one time. So absolutely. Definitely. All right. So it doesn't look like there's any other desperate questions. That's fine. I think we'll wrap up for today. Um, thank you so much, Christine. Like you said, I'm glad we we're able to have you on again to talk about the grant. Um, like we'll keep promoting it. I'm gonna you'll see messages from me pushing that the grant deadline's coming up once it gets to you know October first is that first deadline. Um, so go ahead and look at. It. So thank you, Christine, for being with you me here today. Absolutely. Thank you everybody for attending. As I mentioned, we are recording the show and it will be on our Encompass Live webpage. There we go. Um, these are upcoming shows that we have scheduled, but right here is a link to our archives. You can go there and you can, um, up at, these are the most recent ones at the top. So today's show will be there at the top. Um, by the end of the week, it should be um, done as long as GoToWebinar and YouTube cooperate with me. <laughs> um, and as soon as it is ready, I will send you guys all um, the links, uh, the link to it and let you know. Um, I'll show you too while we're here that you can search our archives for other show topics if you want to. Um, you can search the full archives or just the most recent 12 months if you want to get something really, re really current. Um, and the reason we have that that one li limit there for searching is this is the full archives of Encompass Live. Encompass Live premiered in January 2009, so wow. over 10 years ago, and all of our archives are here. I'm not going to scroll it all the way to the bottom. That'd be crazy that's why we have that search there um so um but so just pay attention when you are watching our recordings um you'll see they all have their original broadcast date so um do pay attention. some things will stand the test of time like book lists and things and stuff about grants applications um but certain topics may become outdated um Products and services might not exist anymore. They might have changed completely. Websites, links might be broken. Um, you never know over time, of course. So just pay attention to when something was originally broadcast and what the topic was if you do watch one of our recordings. Um, but if you do just want most, you know, something current, just limit your search to the most recent 12 months. Um, it will search the description, the presenter, or anything mentioned about that particular show. 
Um, so this is our upcoming shows here. We're working on some filling in some more dates here. As you can see, we're still looking for um, next week. So I'll have something out of that that very soon, hopefully, um, and our upcoming um, schedule. So keep an eye on there for um, our upcoming shows. And we do have a Facebook page. If you do like to use Facebook, you can give us a like over there. And we do reminders um, about shows. Here's a reminder to log in today's show. When our recordings are ready and available, I post on here. So um, you know, if you do like to keep up with things on Facebook, I'd give us a like over there. Otherwise, we do post things on to our mailing lists and our library commission blog and various other social media that we use twitter instagram i am where else where um we have a hashtag and comp live we have an abbreviation if you want to see what's going on with the show so that wraps it up for today thank you so much everybody for being here with us today i hope we'll see you on a future episode bye bye